Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Dice Manor by Arcane Wonders. This is a two to four player game that takes roughly 30 to 45 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game, Dice Manor, your objective is to build a Dice Manor. You are going to be taking your die, rolling them, and attempting to place them on locations on the main board in order to bid for large and small locations to increase your manor. You'll start with one small opening or entrance, and then as you move by gathering these dice, rolling them and placing them down in certain locations, you'll be able to hopefully bid and purchase these locations to add to your manor later. You can also advertise moving your house icon across the board here, scoring victory points on this track here, and eventually these die here are going to move and once they hit together, you're going to be able to gain new dice that you can use throughout the game. These new dice are going to thusly allow you to add to your bids as well as add to your manor tours. At the end of four rounds, the fifth round will trigger and you're going to do a grand opening in which you'll take all your dice, you'll roll them, and you'll be placing them down into your manor. As you place dice into your manor, you will score victory points based on this little board here explaining that. The more dice you place, the higher you score, but you're going to be limited based on how you chose to the manor at the first place. That's basically the idea of the game. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. I'll explain the setup, how to play, and of course, our review. To set up the game Dice Manor, the first thing you do is you will take the main game board out and place it in the center of the playing area. Then you will attach the scoring section right next to it. After that, you're going to separate all the tile types. There are six different types. There is the ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, and sixes, and each of them are represented by a different tile type. Take one of each and place them face up adjacent to the spot next to the main board. Go ahead and based on the number of players, place a cube that matches the color in each of these spots here. These are going to track your victory points throughout the game. As well as each player who is playing is going to get a house icon on the person of their color and two locked dice on the right hand side of their game board. The last thing for the main game board is you're going to take this round marker and place it on number one that signifies the first round of play. Based on the players, you'll go ahead and give one of these players the first player marker, place that in front of them, along with these two reroll tokens. They can either be to reroll in all your dice or to increase one of your die pips by plus one or minus one. Give all of the rest of the die of a specific color to one player, as well as the grand entrance opening, and do the same for all other players. Additionally, you'll have these player references. You can go ahead and give one to each player. They are a front and back. They explain how you score and how the turns go. After that, you'll set all of the different tiles aside that you'll be using throughout the game, and you're pretty much ready to go. Playing the game Dice Manor is as simple as setting it up. The first thing you do is you will find the first player marker, and that player is going to take all of his or her dice and roll them. After they roll the dice, they are then going to select one type of dice, and type are based on numbers. So if it's three, then it's threes. If it's five, then it's all your fives. Six, it's all your sixes. One, two, three, you get the idea. If you choose one number, you must use all your dice of that number. So if I had three threes, a one, two, five, and a six, I would have to use all of my threes if I selected threes, or I'd have to use my one six if I selected six. You can place your die on different locations on the game board. There are three main areas you can place your dice. The first is advertising. You can place any number of die in these three different areas here. They're going to start on first place, but you could be knocked down to second or even third or fourth. Uh, you can place any one number and as many of that one number in this advertising location. At the end of the round, after you've rolled all the dice, that will signify how many spaces you move your house to the uh, right and how many spaces you move your dice to the left. Uh, whenever you move your house on the right-hand side, you'll score victory points, and whenever you get your dice to hit the house, you will get the die for your next play phase. The next place that you can place is on one of these six different bidding locations. Each bidding location is going to come equipped with a certain type of tile, and these are tiles that will be placed into your dice manor. If you want to place your threes, you could place all three of your threes on the three space, thusly, hopefully, guaranteeing that you get that location. Now, the person who is going to be getting these locations as the bids go on are the, is the person who A, bid first, and B, bid the most. Most is the most important, and then first is next. So if I have three threes and I place them down, my opponent has two threes, I would win. If I placed down three threes first and my opponent placed three threes second, I would win. 
So only four threes would beat my three threes. But remember though, when you place your threes down, you have to place them all at once. And if you'd like, you can actually place any number of those threes in any location that you're able to. So I could, for instance, place a three on the advertising and two threes in this location for bidding. Additionally, you may only place your numbers uh, or dice in the locations based on their numbers. So fours go in four areas, fives go in five, six goes in six, and so on and so forth. The last place that you can place is going to be when you give manor tours. In your manor, you're going to be getting to place these down at the end of every round. And there are going to be locations in the middle of these rooms here. Some uh, tiles are going to have multiple rooms, like this one has two, uh, but most of them are just going to have one. When you go through a manor, you'll be placing die of the same type from adjacent rooms. So if I were to have a one and a five, I could place on one round a one here, and on the next round a five here. But I have to place the exact dice on the locations and it has to go from room to room. And at the end of the round, everything is going to be removed. So once you have chosen to roll your dice, select one die type and place it down in any of the three areas that you would like, your turn will pass. The next player will roll their dice and then they will select a location to place their dice down on the board there. And then it'll continue going like that from round to, uh, for, until the entire round is done, until everybody has used all their dice up. Once everyone has used all their dice, then you're going to go to the collects phase. phase. You're gonna go ahead and resolve. And this is how it works. Each player who has the highest bid in each of the six areas will get those tiles and they'll set them aside. The advertising space will be done and you will move your house as well as your dice according to this chart here. And finally, you will score victory points based on the dice that you place in your manor when giving your manor tours. Then the next round will begin. You'll move this second player marker over. You're going to add new tiles down to the game board and once again begin rolling dice. And this will progress up to four rounds. And on the fifth round, this is going to trigger the main manor tour. No longer will you be bidding or be attempting to gather um, more dice or doing basic manor tours. Now you're just doing your ultimate opening, grand opening experience. And how that works is pretty simple. You're gonna get all of your dice as well as hopefully you'll have a nice big mansion by that point in time. And you're going to be rolling and doing a tour. So you'll roll all your dice, you'll select one die of one type. So I have three fives here and uh, two sixes and a three and a four. And I can, I can place all these out. But when I place them, I have to place them. So if I placed a five there, I could place another five on the next five. And if I have an extra die, this is an uninvited guest. They get sent home and I'm gonna lose points for that. And then everybody will go ahead and do the same thing. You can go ahead and do this phase together and you'll roll these dice again, a one, a two ones, a three and a six. So I could place a one out here. Ooh, I could place the six here. I'll do that. That will allow me to re-roll these dice here. And then I've got a six, a one and a five. So I'll place this one out and I'll roll again. I need a, a, a two, nope. So I have to choose the three, it's uninvited. And then finally I'll roll again. Oh, it's a four, this is a two, it's uninvited. So I'll lose points for these and I'll score points based on every time I place die. And it'll tell you on this thing here how it works. So the more dice that you place at the same time when giving your tour will grant you more victory points. You can gain the ability to gain new reroll tokens, etc., etc. And after the fifth round, you will check to see who on the scoreboard is the farthest. And the farthest player is the winner. If you ever go above 100 points, you'll take one of these tokens here indicating that you are over 100 and you'll simply start back at one again. That's the basic idea of the game. Will you give the best grand tour for your die manor? Find out in the game, Dice Manor. Dice Manor has vibes of Between Two Castles and Castles of Mad King Ludwig. It's also got a dice element to it where you'll be rolling your die and using them to bid on locations, gathering those locations and placing them down. Uh, there are very simple, straightforward phases to the game. You will bid, so roll, bid, pass. Next player rolls, bids, passes. Till everybody's done, after everybody's placed all their die out in the three different areas, whether it be giving a tour or advertising or simply trying to get a new tile, which is gonna grant you more benefit at the end of the game, you'll just move on to collecting. You'll resolve everything, you'll score points for each of the advertising bonuses and your manor bonuses, and then build. And everybody builds all at the same time. So it's really, really quick, which is nice about this game. Like everything feels and flows excellent in this game. Then you simply reset and you do it once again and you just go ahead and rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat up until the final and fifth round. And that final and fifth round is all about the tour. It's based on how well you built your dice manor 
based on choosing how to butt mid. Now, there's a variety of different ways you're gonna score points at the end of the game. For instance, whoever has the largest mana will get 12 points. Um, you'll get points for each of the tokens you don't use for rerolls and up and down pipping. You'll get points for the different types of diversity and, of course, color majority as well. Some tiles are wild. If it's a purple, this tile is wild to any tile that it attaches to. So if it attaches to a green and a blue and a yellow room, this is a green, blue, and a yellow room. But if it's not attached to a red room, it's not a red room. This is a way in order for you to gain bonus diversity points at the end of the game when you're trying to calculate score for Dice Manor. Other cool things about this game include the fact that everything is kind of attached and joined together. There are various different things that you're going to see on the board, but it all fits in really well. You know that your house, as soon as it hits these die, just by looking at it, you're going to be getting extra die to use throughout the game. Uh, you know that you're going to be scoring points based on moving across these little house markers here, uh, because it's indicated on everything that that's how you score points in the game. It even has a nice little location where it's like you start at zero points and you can place your tokens here and then once you get onto the game board then you can go ahead and move on to the one as opposed to trying to fit everybody in on that one little spot. I like how they added that. There are a variety of tiles in the game, some with more than others. It would have been actually nice to see even more tile diversity in the game, so it felt like there's enough additional replayability in the game. But in reality, you're not going to see a whole lot of these tiles for yourself each and every game anyway. In a two-player game, maybe you'd score three to four tiles at most each round. And of course, because you get different tiles, unique tiles, each and every time you play the game and different setups, it won't really matter all that much. But I always just wanted to see extra things like additional little wilds, and ways in which we can bid out each other because if you see something like a wild space for dice but also a wild room type on this big guy here it can lead to some crazy shenanigans but I did notice that it does that on the smaller ones which is cool so I would have liked to see that a little bit more in the game. What I also liked about the game is you have your reroll tokens. You have a plus and minus, and normally in games, when you do a plus, a six can never go to a one, and a five, it can only go to a five. But in this game, a six can plus to a one, and a six can minus to a five. And thusly, you're going to be able to rotate and change your dice in the game as you need to in order to secure the bids that you want. And of course, re-rolling. Sometimes you roll all your dice and you get nothing that you want. And you can't plus or minus any dice in order to get what you want either. So then you can actually re-roll all your dice and hopefully get this, the, the side that you want. Another cool thing too is you never feel like you have nothing really to bid on, most of the time at least. Most of the time you can at least place die in your manner to score points, to give you additional tokens, etc, etc. So choosing to tour your manor before its grand opening can give you points, it can give you tokens, and it can be utilized for leftover dice. Um, but it's at least letting you have an availability to doing something, or if you don't want to spend too many dice on certain locations, you can score additional points throughout the game that might give you that slight advantage by the time the end game rolls around. Uh, this game is a dice bidding game. This game is a... Uh, tile placement slash like how you choose to make, co communicate all the different locations together. There are doors and entryways that you must co connect correctly. It's very, very intuitive though. And of course the main only rule that I didn't really mention is the fact that when you have your little entrance tile, you can't place something that blocks off your main entrance, which I mean in reality just makes sense. I never ran into the problem where it really had the need or want to do that, but I imagine it can come up. So be careful with that. Uh, overall, Dice Manor is a simple family game with a diverse amount of placement, some complexity to make the game interesting, and some unique little twists and turns that you might not notice as you're placing the game down. I love the added finale bonus of being able to tour my mansion and see how well I built it, as well as when to use these tokens because they become very, very useful depending on how it is, uh, and depending on when and how you want to utilize them. The quality of the game is excellent. All the dice are well made. All the tiles are uh, hard and double, I think like double thick, so that's good. Uh, artwork is beautiful. The, the, the manner is really cool. And the fact that each of the different tiles has different pieces of artwork, but yet the colors kind of remain in the same theme. Uh, this details everything you need to know about the game. Once you've ex heard it explained once, all you'll need is these little things to keep track of what the game is like and how it works and what you need to do. And so it all works great. If you want a four player family game that involves dice and tile placement, like a little bit of bidding and a little bit of aggressiveness, it's very, very light. It's mainly about making your manner, making it fun. Then you're going to enjoy dice. Manner, a colorful, beautiful, exciting game that I'll be keeping in my collection. 
Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dice Manor by Arcane Wonders. If you're interested in picking up this game, there's a link down below in the description. It's currently available for purchase. You can also go ahead and check out our website on filteredgamer.com. We have blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Thank you guys so much. If you really, really, really have seen more than one of our videos before and you, you would do it in your heart, a service for us to subscribe, we'd greatly appreciate it. If we've earned your subscription, if you've watched more than one of our videos, please consider doing so. We stream live every Wednesday on Whatnot and every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch where we play games just like this one here. And in fact, we might play this one. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to building the most beautiful dice manner I possibly can with you next time.